What's up my friends, welcome back! Let me just stop this awful sound for a minute. So, I guess that you've noticed a small movement of the camera to the right. And that's because I'm using a homemade slider like this one. And in this video I'll show you how to build one yourself. The slider is based on the Arduino and it has an LCD control with a rotor encoder. All the parts are 3D printed and the slider uses a step motor for a very precise control. So in this video we will see how to design the parts, build the entire body, add the step motor and then how to control a step motor driver with the Arduino. And also how to create a menu using this rotor encoder and two push buttons and an LCD screen. So let's prepare all the components and let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. The first thing to do was to measure the diameter of these two metal tubes, but also of a NEMA 17 step motor, some bearings, the size of a bunch of screws, this camera support, an LCD and all the extra parts for this project. Once I had all the parts dimensions, I've started editing the plastic parts for this project. I've made the left and right side of the slider that will be attached to the metal tubes and also the main plate of the slider. I've also designed 4 legs so you could adjust the height and the angle of the slider. Then we have this case where I will place the LCD and all the controls but also the Arduino Nano and a driver IC for the step motor. All the designs have holes for screws, so you could tight all the parts in place. We have screws for the left and right sides of the slider, to fit those in place on the metal tubes and tight them so they won't move. Also screw holes for the step motor and for closing the main control case. By the way, below in the description you will find a link for the 3D files of this project. A file with all the dimensions and the full part list, so check those out before you start this project. You will also find there the final code and schematic of the project. I've used my 3D printers and printed the 3D files using grey and black PLA material with a 20% infill and a 0.4mm nozzle and a layer height of 0.3mm. If you would like to buy a 3D printer, I usually leave some coupons for you in the description that will also have my workshop so check those out below. Anyway guys, these are all the design parts. Two supports for the left and right side. One has a NEMA 17 step motor support here. They both have places for the 3D printed legs with some bumps so you could fix the angle of the leg. Then we have the main plate with some spaces for bearings and a hole in the middle for this kind of camera support. Next we have this 3D printed case made out of two parts. One is the main case and the other one is the front plate of the case with holes for the two push buttons and the rotor encoder. So of course we'll also need those two push buttons like these ones. One rotor encoder, an I2C LCD module, the Arduino Nano, a 12V DC transformer, the NEMA 17 step motor and the A4988 step motor driver like this one. This module receives 3 signals and will control 4 outputs for the motor coils. Those signals are the enable pin, direction and the amount of steps. With these 3 signals we could precisely control the step motor. If we open the step motor we could see some coils, 8 in this case, but in reality there are only 2 main coils, each with 4 windings. This is the simplified diagram of a step motor. Inside it has two coils, A with red and coil B with blue. By applying a voltage drop to these coils a current will flow and a magnetic field will be created. That magnetic field will push or attract the rotor permanent magnets and spin the rotor a certain amount of degrees. 
Now if we switch the inputs, the motor will make one more step. We switch the inputs again and it will make one more and so on. That's why it is called step motor. This motor needs a total of 200 steps to perform a full rotation. And that it is very important to know, since we will use that amount later in the code. To control these inputs, we will use an A4988 driver. We need to supply 12 volts to it and connect the B1, B2, A1 and A2 outputs to the step motor. By applying a low signal to the enable pin, we activate the driver. Then, by applying a low signal to the direction pin, it will spin the motor to the left. Applying a high signal to that pin and the motor will spin to the right. Now, we will create a square wave applied to the step pin. Each state change of that pin from high to low or low to high will rotate the motor one more step. Now this is the schematic that I will use for this project. Make sure that you add a capacitor to the input of the motor driver and pull downs for all the push buttons and for the end stop switch. Otherwise those buttons will be floating and the digital read will be very noisy. I mount the side parts on the two metal tubes and tie the screw so they can't get out. For the slider plate I've used this type of bearings that I've got out from old rollers. But you could also use normal 22mm diameter bearings with a screw nut in between like this, so the two bearings would fit like this on the metal bar with a small gap in between. I've screwed in place the four pairs of bearings like this. Now the plate could slide with no problems. Make sure to add some silicon oil to the bearings so they would rotate easy. Now I add two more pairs of bearings here on these middle holes so the plate won't be able to get out. As you can see, now the slider plate is secured in place. I screw in place the step motor here on the support. To transfer movement you should use a timing belt and a pulley like this one. But the one that I've ordered is not long enough, so till I receive a new one I will just use this kind of plastic wire. I've printed a special pulley that could get screwed on the shaft of the motor and another one on the other side with a small bearing inside. Now I tie one end of the wire to the rolling plate. Pass the wire over the pulley and then over the bearing at the other side and finally I tie it on the other side of the rolling plate. Finally I add an end stop switch like this one on the motor side support. This switch will be used to home the position of the slider anytime that you want. And that's it, the slider body is ready. The wires from the motor and the switch will go inside of the control case. So now let's prepare that case. Download and follow the schematic of this project from a link below. I first screw in place the LCD, the two push buttons and the rotor encoder in the middle. On a drill PCB and using female pins, I solder the Arduino Nano and the step motor driver together with the 10 microfarads capacitor for the 12 volts input. I also solder 4 male pins for the driver outputs for the step motor connector. Now, using wires I connect the I2C pins of the LCD to pins A4 and A5 of the Arduino. The rotor encoder has two outputs and we name those data and clock and they will be connected to pins 8 and 9 of the Arduino. The rotor encoder also has a push button inside and that will be connected to digital pin 10. The other two push buttons are connected to pins 11 and 12 and the end stop switch to digital pin 4. All buttons have pull downs to ground so when the button is pushed we will jump to a high state. Finally, I make the connections from the Arduino to the step motor driver. I connect the enable, the direction and step pins to digital pin 5, 6 and 7 and we are done. Now I pass the 12 volt transformer wire through the case hole and connect the positive wire to the V in pin of the Arduino and ground to ground and also supply 12 volts to the step motor driver. Now pass the motor and end stop wires inside of the case and now let's take a look over the code. What I want to do is to be able to use the encoder and enter a menu. Inside of this menu I could home the slider or change the speed. Once the speed is selected you could select sliding to the right or to the left using the buttons. Now on the left side we have an end stop so the code could easily know when to stop. But on the right side we don't have one. 
so the code will have to count the maximum amount of steps. We calculate how many steps we need for 1 cm. Then it is very easy to know how many steps we need for a full meter. When the slider is home, the position step counter in the code will be set to 0. The code is quite easy, but probably a bit long. Remember, you will need the I2C Liquid Crystal Library if you want to use this kind of LCD screen, so make sure you download it from a link below and install it to your Arduino IDE. See my other rotary encoded menu video to learn more about this project, because since I've already done that, I won't explain it step by step. But anyway, now, inside of the code, each time the data or clock pins of the encoder or any other of the buttons will change their state, we enter an interruption. By rotating the encoder, we increase or decrease the menu position or the speed amount. Please read all the comments in the code in order to understand more. Now, in the infinite loop, if one of the left or right buttons is pressed, we will activate the enable pin for the step motor driver. Select the direction with low for left and high for right and create a square wave on the step pin. The delay between the high and low state of the square wave will give us the frequency and that will control the rotation speed of the motor. Read in the code how to calculate your delay time depending on the pulley size. Download the code from a link below. Compile, make sure you have all the connections as in the schematic and upload the code. And there you go. This is how this works. When I start the slider, the first thing that it does is homing itself and by that reset the position. Then I press the rotor encoder and select the speed menu. In this case, the speed is expressed in seconds. This will be the time it takes the slider to make a full meter. For now, I will set it to 4 seconds. I press the rotor encoder again and exit the speed menu and we are ready to slide. I press the R button and the slider starts moving to the right till it reaches the maximum amount of steps. Remember that timing belt is much better if you want precision, so once I will receive the 3 meters belt, I will use that. The slider stops if it reaches the maximum sliding steps, or if any of the buttons is pressed. So there you go my friends, you could slide to the left or to the right and also adjust the speed. The slider is quite strong and made with metal tubes. It can easily carry my DSLR Canon camera and with this cheap camera adapter you could set the angle. I will leave a link for this support in the description. Also make sure you visit my webpage electronoops.com for more details and photos and if you would like to support me check my Patreon page and by that be able to see when I post my videos one day before. Well guys I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.